Galleon would be the ambitious, independent project of Toby Gard, frustrated by the lack of creative freedom offered him by Core Design after his contribution towards the creation of Tomb Raider. From 1997 to 2004, a whirlwind development would see the title jumping across console generations, switching publisher after cancellation, as well as plenty of other issues. After seven years, the swashbuckling adventure would finally grace Xbox, but perhaps the wait would prove fruitless. Not lacking in creativity or ideas, this one is instead submerged by uneven gameplay that somehow proves both innovative and dated at the same time, trying to manage the struggles of 3D adventures, but coming after several stellar releases would work around these issues. Galleon concerns the exploits of Rama Sabrir, a suave captain whose bare chest and potent charm woos many a woman upon sight. After investigating a ship for Dr. Aureliano, his servant Jabez pulls a double cross, resulting in the good doctor's death and his home destroyed. This sets in motion a journey across sea and land to stop this underhanded crook from gaining too much power, while Faith, Aureliano's daughter, accompanies the crew. It sounds quite dark, but the cheesy dialogue and goofy movie quote theft plant the tongue firmly in cheek. The using charisma of the lead adds a lot, and his interactions with fairly layered characters help. This tone blends well with the cartoon style aesthetics, and the expressive facials add immensely. <laughs> Something of an odd time capsule, you can see a lot of holdover elements from Guard's previous work on Tomb Raider. This adventure, divided into seven levels, showcases expansive stages that are large, explorable, and colourful. Rama's exploits are split between puzzle solving, platforming across hazards, and combat with either swords or fists. Collectibles are abundant in each level with the game tracking your stats for health pickups, shootable pistols, and treasures which are returned to your ship. There are a ton of these between most stages, and while the story takes a good 9 hours to beat without much exploration, you can easily bump this up exploring further, including optional death traps which reward bonus swords. Sadly, things decline as soon as you gain control of the hero. Unlike adventure games of the time, which either use static angles or controlled cameras, there is no direct control of your perspective. Instead, the camera turns to whichever direction you point Rama, with the right analogue stick instead being mapped to submenus, such as giving orders or healing. Sadly, this camera system feels very unwieldy, especially when you're forced to navigate tight spaces and it gets stuck. The controls hamper this as well, with movement speed dictated by how harshly you push the left analogue stick. But movement feels extremely odd, suffering from an almost floaty physics base, which sees the captain attaching to ceilings upside down, running over objects far too often when you're trying to climb, and even falling through the floor at one point. Every physical action you perform in this game feels unwieldy, uncomfortable, and harms most of the gameplay along the way. Platforming lacks the responsiveness or sharpness of games like Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time. And while Rama can suffer pretty sizeable falls without dying, he's not invincible, especially when there are hazards like lava. Swimming isn't much better, with the camera struggling to keep up with sharp movements. Combat feels light and unsatisfying, with weak combos and strikes turning swashbuckling into dishwashing, though a handful of powers gained from continuous hits do the job nicely. 
enemies rarely put up a fight, but frustrations like taking damage from enemies bouncing off the wall and cheap sub-bosses can irritate. Bigger foes, meanwhile, all boil down to the same mounting then stabbing in the head pattern, which grows old quickly. Galleon's disparate elements don't come together, and while brief moments can gel into a fun hole, you can count these occasions on the fingers of two hands. Even slight deviations, such as manning a mech suit to face a Hydra, feel clunky. Galleon's protracted development shows up most in its visuals, proving one of the Xbox's least flattering games. The low poly characters are really ugly, environments are poorly textured, and animations are wonky compared to competing games. While a colourful palette and solid lighting do redeem the performance somewhat, you'll often be gawking at how poor the game looks. The sound is also low quality at points, as while the voice work is decently campy and fits the tone, you'll struggle to hear it sometimes thanks to poor mixing. Audio effects are weak, and the music is really nondescript, with a few tracks repeated ad loop during key moments, and little else outside of combat, chase runs, and bosses. Hey, what have we here, a rich merchant? Bandits! We've been waiting for an hour for you... someone to turn up! Just for that, you're going to have to pay our toll! Galleon would prove a game out of time, looking to solve problems which after its elongated development finally ceased, were fixed in superior ways by competing adventure games, meaning it was almost shipwrecked on arrival. It's a shame, because the prospect of swashbuckling across the seas could have been a fun take on the action-adventure genre. Sadly, the controls and movement cause frustration with a majority of the mechanics, leaving players wrestling with these rather than feeling like an epic ship captain. Unless you can stomach these flaws and need an adventure fix on the Xbox, this one is best left to sink. Oh yes, we had our disagreements, but you and I, Faye, I always thought we had something special between us. I never liked you, Jabez, but now I despise you. <laughs> <laughs>